Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom, uh, episode 12, recorded uh, November 25th. Um, yeah, this is a podcast about the Plone community and Plone the product at CMS. And my name is uh, Philip Bauer from Munich, and my co-host is Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. Hi, hey, Philip. Hey, good how evening. Are you? We haven't We're seen each other for quite a while. We've been slacking. No, it's not true. We've been really, really busy after the conference um, with yeah. work. Yeah, and and being and being and being ill and still getting getting the flu after PlonConf like like one I, I was after PlonConf like oh I didn't get catch anything not even a small cold and then one and a half week later it was like Wah! and there I went also at yeah. home and, and I, like like we discussed this this October November thing everybody is doing everything to finish up for Christmas and I've I've been 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 solving bugs and 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 and, and issues and. Th- Thingies uh, to, to thingies to bring back something from PlonConf. Uh, for the last two weeks, uh, uh, when I was not ill, uh, things just just fell down and broke, and people are are, are hurrying to to finish stuff. I think for Christmas, for December. Yeah, the project finished for me, and uh, then they ran over time because I guess there had to be some additional work needs to be done. But the other projects already started, so a lot of overlap and double work load basically. Yeah. But um, I, I'm happy. I'm, as far as I know, only only it's too too many. Uh, two people got COVID. Maybe after the conference. Maybe not from, but after. Um, not sure. I heard uh, that two people from Imu. I hope I hope they're well now. Um, didn't hear anything bad. So uh, that is that was good. Um, so this is um, as as we said the podcast about the plone community and the last time we saw the plone community we did the podcast so that was exciting we had a live episode episode 11 uh at the plone conference and we're still giddy and uh, very thankful uh, for for you all having us there it was a lot of fun for us and it was I a hope packed you room it. and uh, well i was uh, i was a little bit nervous as you were i think for this i, I was, was so uh, nervous i was like one and a half hours before i was like okay now i'm going to 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 uh, go back i i bought a coffee at a small co- coffee shop uh, and sat there for half an hour finishing up some notes there it was like there we go which yeah. is stupid i'm not nervous now but if you're in a, in a room packed full of people and it's live well this for people this is just as live i mean we don't cut we don't make yeah. changes we record it in one go and that's why we always go over time because we always say ah oh, 30 minutes and then it's like <laughs> almost an hour yeah but yeah it, it was it was great it was a great con we'll, we'll get to that later uh, uh in this yeah. episode to look a bit little bit of look back like it was a football match but uh yeah, thanks. It was great. And now back to yeah, kind of season yeah, the, two, right? Kind We're of. Not... But we keep the the numbers <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah. counting, so this is number twelve and not one of two, whatever. Uh, the the uh, the event uh, has been recorded at the Plone conference, and it's online on our small web corner on plone.org slash newsroom. Um, we almost forgot to upload the video, but we added that there. Um, it's been yeah. live. It's been broadcast live, and it's been uh, online in in YouTube uh, like a minute yeah. after after the event. So not yeah. a, not there, a problem. There's no audio only version. Uh, yeah. Normally, if we do this, we record and we also take an audio only version, which we uh, publish to the podcast platforms. Uh, so um, you might be missing some uh, screen shares uh, uh, if you listen to the audio only version, which will be available for this. Uh, uh, episode 12 yeah there's not going to be too many screen shares <coughs> this time so um you, you might see or hear you, and then you don't see that obviously i i have glasses it's my second day the second day in my life to have glasses so i'm still c- very confused by that i have to move my head everyone who has glasses is uh, thinking stupid beginner you didn't make it easy on yourself because you're now directly going to the multifocal ones and that's yeah. an extra an extra bonus to everything shifting in your in your vision yeah I'll, i like my challenges okay <laughs> you'll, let's you'll go manage to yes because we've got news, news. so big we've got news. Big, big news big news so yesterday Philip, your honor yeah there there was a uh, the secret plone underground met and decided that uh, the final release of Plone 6 will happen on Monday, December 12. Yeah, uh, for people who is... don't believe this, uh, there's a Plone uh, release team or coordination team, I think, that just openly, I think, uh, uh, yeah. uh, talks about planning every few weeks. They're also on Discord, so nah, it's not that secret. 
Ah, crap. <laughs> yeah, it's on, it's on Discord. There's going to be a community post also. Um, there's going to be a RC release candidate too. Uh, we'll release that on December 2nd, so Friday next week. Uh, Because we already had touches. We had a release candidate one. Yes, Last exactly. Week. And it's, um, I, I, I love it. I've run a lot of projects with it already, and it's looking good. And there is, yeah, there's changes in that one. But, um, yeah, sorry for so interrupting what's, you. What's the, 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 the release yeah. candidate two will be next Friday, this next Friday, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the final at uh, December 12th. There's actually a bug, an important bug fix in RC2 that didn't make it into RC1. We realized it after we launched a university website that we just migrated to Plon6 Classic, uh, where when you have original image scales uh, without a scale, obviously, uh, then uh, that created a database write, and thousands of students hit the uni uni university website, and the undo page got you had a commit for every visitor where there was an image rendered. But that got fixed, um, and now we, uh, I think there's nothing major happening between RC1 and RC2. I, I think Maurit live patched, it's, it's against normal, against principles, but it was, it was discovered the same day. I think he updated the, uh, the version CFG on the 600 RC1 to have the, the corrected plow name file in there. Not so sure. I didn't check that. Okay, but if, if if you do if you do want to move an RC1 into production this or ne next week, uh, check out this one. That's it's rather important. That's true. And and we have another another major release. It's not only the the, the back end and, and classic UI, the, the content server, which is now in release candidate. We have a final for Volto. Yeah, we have Volto 16.00, a final version of Volto. Obviously, when we release Plone 6.0.0, the version pin for Volto will be 16.10 or 0.1, one bug, uh, uh, some bug fix release. But the final version of Volto 16 is out, and that is uh, the culmination of a lot of work. And a uh, huge congratulations to everyone who's, who was involved in that project. The, the change list is huge. And actually, Philip, there is already a 1610. I think it was released yesterday or this morning. <laughs> so there will be indeed, there will be a patch version. But uh, I also, I attended the, the Volto team meeting uh, this Tuesday. Everybody can join if they want. If they're interested in Volto, want to help out or want to know what's going on uh, uh, every other Tuesday or every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, I think. There's the Volto team meeting at, at uh, uh, 11 o'clock uh, uh, Western European time. Um, And uh, I asked a bit about this, this the problem, not the problem, actually the problem, uh, uh, people, the release for Volto 16, it's like, okay, why can't you wait till December 12th? There is so much, so much. I, 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 well, I, I picked some stuff this afternoon from the changelog, but there's so much in Volto 16 and people just, they didn't want to pile on more and more things. So Volto 17, there's, there's some really cool stuff coming up for Volto 17 and they didn't want to, to add that also to. So that's actually why the cut has been made a bit earlier. Yep. Uh, uh, because it has been, Volto 16 has been in development for six months now. And as I said, the change list is huge. The first one is, of course, Slate, which went from an add-on uh, to being now uh, part of Core. Um, pum, 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 pum. And for the rest, there's a lot of tooling changes. Uh, Yarn 3 is now uh, the default with uh, a much more optimized uh, 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 node modules handling, uh, a lot of frameworks in, in, in the system itself, because we depend, for example, on, on a, a component called Resol to do the server-side uh, rendering that has been upgraded. Cypress has been upgraded. Um, The list goes on and on. I'm, I'm, yeah. I must say, I'm not really an expert on Volto um, internals yet. I know my way a bit around uh, on this, but the, the, the change list is huge. It, it is indeed. There are usability changes also, L tons of bug fixes, stuff like, okay, copying uh, blocks, uh, moving them around in, in, in pairs and stuff like that. There's like a, a lot of stuff that is in 16 that didn't, was not there in 15. So that, that's a, it's a big, big, big change. And we're really happy about that. And uh, there's going to be more in 17. There uh, is rumor of a new theme. Uh, additional theme as an option. First re will be released as an add-on. Um, and there, uh, there are great features and add-ons that will be included, maybe the accordion block uh, and some, some other stuff that is currently only available as add-ons, which is a great uh, ecosystem. Yeah, that um, is, I missed that from, from 
uh, going through the change log, but I, I think there's a lot more than is in the change log because, also, for example, the grid block uh, that has now been added, the accordion blocks. Um, I, so some other tidbits I saw was, uh, uh, for example, li a lot of big fixes, like you said, like things that we take for granted in classic UI, but still had needed some work to push through the front end, like link integrity warnings, uh, warnings when, for example, a content rule did not work. Uh, there's now open street map support in the maps block. So, and the list goes on and on. And also with things that people just forgot to add to the main change log notes. So that's photo yeah. 16. But the back end also had some changes, obviously. Uh, we're not going through the list uh, now between uh, beta four and uh, RC1. But there's one big thing that really happened, and uh, Fred, you did a lot of work, and uh, Maurits did a lot of work for that, and that is support for Python 3.11. So officially, Plone Core supports Python 3.11, uh, starting with the release candidate one, which is like two weeks ago, uh, was two weeks ago, something like that. Um, no, it was like one week ago. I can't remember. Like the day we launched it's the university website, the RC1 came out. <laughs> sending an email. Uh, can we yeah. still, can we deploy that now? And they, oh, sorry, we just launched like five <laughs> minutes ago. Sorry, no can do. Well, to be yeah. honest, uh, uh, to be fair, the, the, the Python 3.11 support, I helped a bit with that, but most of the work was already also done by uh, Jill Focada and also by David Glick because it, we had some, uh, uh, before that we had some uh, stability problems uh, with running the tests, mainly also doing the, the pull requests and the integration. So I think Jill upgraded a lot of the Chrome driver support for the, for the visual uh, testing. Good. Uh, and then also Jill looked into the, the, the Python 3.11 uh, support, which I helped with, and that really broke Jenkins until we had some issues with Python 3.10, and then with 3.11 it became uh, only worse. But that's solved yeah. now, and, uh, we, when we, and when we when we finally the test ran, then of course we saw uh, what was broken, and then uh, a community member stepped in to solve uh, the actual programming bugs. Yeah, some, some, we, some doc tests needed to be written, but doc tests are weird anyway. <coughs> Let's not go there. Yeah. But, uh, so 3.11 is, is not experimental. It's officially supported, and we're actually running a site in production on 3.11. Uh, and it works fine, even with add-ons. Uh, you obviously have to check because we, the Plone community, uh, the core team is not responsible for all add-ons. But the add-ons that that project is using uh, are all running on um, Python 3.11, and that includes the Elder, the whole LDAP stack and uh, lots, tons of stuff. So it is, it's not that hard uh, to get that running. And the big thing there is speed increase. Yeah, I mean, why so, are we so excited? We, yeah. <laughs> the best for last. They exactly. did a lot of optimizations. I think there's a gener uh, general speed increases of, of 20 to 40 percent. Yeah, it, it very much depends on the project and the code that it's running. So the one project that we have had a test suite that uh, ran, uh, took about 20 minutes to run, and it's down to 14, which is <laughs> really great. But uh, obviously, it depends on what you're doing with Python. Uh, I, uh, it feels snappy, uh, but this at this speed the speed of obviously the speed of plan 6 classic <coughs> and and volto you don't feel the uh, the lag the do python is not the thing that uh, makes it slow mm -hmm. it will probably be stuff in your theme and s stuff like that and, and then the, the perceived uh, 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 snappiness is not only python 311 because i had this feedback uh, already for a yes. year with the plone 6 yeah. uh, uh, betas alphas and betas that even for classic ui i mean volto is a totally different rendering system and also another yeah, user kind of experience computer. but even for classic ui i also got feedback uh, from customers and users said it, it's it's snappy it's it's it you can continue clicking and we didn't upgrade any server uh, uh, we run it on the same hardware uh, same operating system uh, uh, but it's just the architecture that that has been uh, optimized a lot yeah and the error uh, error handling is really nice in 3.11 so if you have an error the python uh, traceback um, rendering is much much more useful for uh, Especially for people who are not constantly fighting errors, because it really points you to this line, this character. Here it starts. That's maybe you wanted to do something like that. So they they did a lot of uh, good work for yeah. that. So and we're benefiting from that. So no reason to not change to uh, Python three eleven right now. 
actually. Yeah. And li like you said, watch out for add-ons because I think you said with your project you have the, the LDAP stack running. Yep. I ran into an issue with 3.10 where uh, yeah. for passwords in LDAP the stack, that's that's fixed now, but I think we still need a release for it. I'm not sure. Did you make an interim release? I think there was a release. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a release. Yeah, but those are the the, the, yes. the, 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 yeah, the 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 obvious things you have to watch for. You know, for. For minor Python versions, there might be some new constructs there or some deprecations. Yeah, and you'll have to look at that. Most obviously, of the work, uh, w w yeah, most of the work was obviously on the Zope level. Yeah, uh, and Jens Wagelpool and other people uh, did a lot of work to support because Plone can't say, we, "Hey, we're doing a 3.11 unless Zope does that." So, thanks to the Zope community to uh, step in and uh, actually get that out. Uh, basically, the day uh, Python 3.11 was out, it was really good. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're done with Plone Six. So we can look at Plone Seven, right? No, we actually. No? We, Why we, not? We, it is time to panic uh, because. <laughs> um, uh, December 12 is is not hey cool to, is, this is going to happen and um, I don't know Fred is going to take care of everything so it's going to be done. Uh, actually, a lot of people have to get a lot of work done before to make uh, December 12th uh, happen and be a success, and that is um, the docs. M most importantly, the docs and. Um, finishing touches and then switching the URL. So we decided at the meeting yesterday that after the RC2, like after Friday the 2nd, uh, we'll take the whole week, uh, not take a week off and go to the mountains. Uh, no, uh, take the whole week to be uh, and, and allow to switch uh, uh, URLs at that po uh, in that week. So it doesn't have to happen on that Monday, everything. So for example, the um, uh, Six dash dev dot docsplon.org. I think that's the dev uh, uh, docs URL. Mm -hmm. uh, can switch to docsplon.org uh, during that week, and that needs to happen. And the same goes for the demo sites. Demo dot cannot show plon five dot two, but obviously plon six with Volto. And then we need a nice URL <laughs> for the classic uh, demo site. Uh, the installers team has a. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of uh, weight on their shoulders, I guess. Are you involved in that? No, I'm not. Do you know so who is? I, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I, yeah, I, I, no, no official thing here, but I think we already just, I mean, to, to put things first, we're not Apple. We're not like, oh, we keep we can keep everything secret for two years uh, uh, and then suddenly, boom, there's a, there's a new computer or a new tablet One or a thing. new or a new virtual reality glasses, which is the rumors for, for next year, what I've been working on. So, I mean, development's all in the open. And, and like you said, we are moving to, to the Plus 6 release and we don't need to do everything at the same time. But yeah, it would be really great if we have at least a finished uh, first version of the docs uh, uh, also available on, uh, uh, on, on December 12th. And of course, Plone.org. Yeah. Um, which you so are also in involved, not in the installers team, but also yeah, yeah, I'm not. Um, Plon.org, there's going to be a sprint <coughs> next Friday. and uh, December 2nd, we, yeah. We successfully, there's a beta.plon.org. I think that's also publicly available. It's a Volto site. And a team of people, mostly Riku Pekka, uh, led by Riku Pekka, but uh, some, some people are working on that, adding content. And uh, we're taking that site, and that's going to be interesting. And we're importing the whole of the old Plon.org site into that existing Plone 6 Volto site. Uh, this is taking, uh, um, t um, putting, putting pl uh, export import, collective export import uh, to a real uh, test and also migrate using the in-place migration to Volto. So all the rich text fields show up as Volto blocks, uh, slate blocks and stuff like that. So we're doing all that and we're planning to do that all during the weekend of the sprint next week. Uh, so I'll have to have some work ahead of me uh, for that. And uh, then we'll go live with that site and start editing uh, simultaneously uh, and then switch the URLs sometime, maybe on Monday, but I'm, I'm not sure, maybe maybe a day before that, we, we, because people have to... I don't know, write press releases because marketing is also an issue as usual. 
Yeah, so uh, marketing team, as you said, Rika Pekka is leading it there. Like, uh, 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 our newest member is uh, Talia from South Africa, who's, uh, 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 who has also did a great talk at LoneConf, uh, uh, who is going to help out now with some copywriting and text. Uh, Eriko, Kim, um, how can I, uh, Sally is a long member, long-standing member of the marketing team. And I joined myself. Uh, for, <laughs> I was the first time there uh, this uh, Tuesday afternoon also. To, to help out. I mean, if I if I can talk for an hour with you on plone stuff, then maybe I can also have an hour to write some stuff down every month. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> That's useful. A, a very nerdy question, Philip. Now, we, I will say we do development stuff. I noticed with uh, with uh, Plone Volto, uh, uh, the Volto, the text area, the, the, the rich text uh, 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 migration, as you said, but I saw you first... You still keep the uh, uh, you keep the old rich texts on the content yes. in the new site, and yes. then in an extra step, you are converting them. Is that the, now the default thing, Ex or did, exactly. is that is that learned wisdom from the last one or two months? It is. Uh, it's the default. It's it's <coughs> never been different. So I, I, haven't ah, gotten okay. a, I haven't gotten around to write a, a, a export import step that takes the Plone four HTML and turns out <coughs> Volto blocks. Because it, it it it's not a big win because all the other code is already there that fixes the images and the the classes and the links um, that is that needs to be done and that's obviously not super important when you go to Volto but the intermediate step to go to Plone six with the like fixed HTML in the TinyMC editor mm -hmm. allows you to compare previous and like four, for example, and six classic before you go to Volto. Um, and you can find out where the bugs might have happened. Yeah. And then we're migrating to Volto using the blocks, my, uh, blocks conversion tool that uh, Erico wrote. Yeah, so you did obviously more, more uh, 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 collective export import talks than I did. But whenever I, I speak publicly about export import, I would say it's extract, transform, load. But then we're missing the transform because we're actually we're doing extracting to the JSON and then we're doing load again in the blown side. And then there's actually there's a there's a, a kind of secret transform at the end of it where you still can do some fine tuning uh, at the end. So actually yeah. we're doing like extract, load and a little bit of transform. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a very <coughs> important huge set. It's called fix HTML and it's pluggable in that way that you can pass it multiple HTML fixers. And I, for the last project for the University of Gießen, I have actually have four or five HTML fixers that do different things. Like one does tables, one does uh, image uh, scales and other, other things. And um, we do, this is all run by the same pipeline. And yeah. also the, for, for Plone Org, it's basically one click. I do one click and it, it imports the whole JSON and transforms it to Volto and does the blocks conversion. In, yeah. in, it's all one thing. I just have to sit and wait yeah. and then complain about the results not being yeah. what I wanted. So that, that's, I think, uh, the, the biggest thing I think we did in 2021 with export import. And also you uh, now learned, uh, because I haven't looked at it for a while, but you've made it now pluggable. But those tiny fixes, I mean, we've also contributed a few things when we migrate a few sites. And many other people that used export import uh, uh, the last 12 to 18 months also contributed those. Uh, so there are a lot of tiny fixes like uh, uh, the UIDs correctly on images so that the image editing works to fix HTML. Uh, absolute to relative uh, conversions with resolve UIDs is now fixed. Brilliant find of you, by the way, that we, we could use the link integrity, reuse the link integrity code for that. That was also like we yeah. were, export import also rests on the shoulders of giants, not only REST API, but we found out what was that at end of last year or beginning this year where you said, look, we need to find stuff back because the link is broke. We can't find it, but wait, there's this whole link integrity module that checks if links are broken and yeah. they can reversely fix the links for us. Yeah, actually, we, I think I stole the code and had to adapt some things for that. But it's, it's, uh, there's a mention, at least, of Plonet Link, <laughs> which was, um, I, I was working on, uh, yeah, let's, let's not so go there. We finally, uh, one, one we, we finally talked about export-import in yeah, the VN podcast. I did it. No, not again. This <laughs> yeah, is the yeah, first yeah. time we go into detail. Okay. So, <laughs> next, uh, betterplone.org. It's happening. It's work. Uh, December uh, second, we have another sprint, yes. and yeah, it would be great. And I think we'll manage it to to get it. Uh, uh, I really hope we can get it at the live at the at the Plon Six final. Uh, yeah, release at that's, that's going to be a big marketing thing that Plon Org runs on Plon Six, and it really looks nice. It has these great blocks that Red Turtle created, and we're using them to great benefit. It it looks really nice. 
I hope um, that's going to be a huge success. So, um, okay, we did. We had PlumCon. That was quite a while ago. We had PlumCon. Uh, I, we shouldn't do a full review of the whole thing because it's it, like it's, it's online. So, it's it's so this let's, year. Let's talk about the th stuff that wasn't online, the juicy stuff. I I, I saw I, I I was at a party and it was great. It was vigorous dancing. That was cool. Uh, that uh, we hadn't didn't have dancing at a PlumConf party for a while now. I think uh, the lo I'm not sure which one was the last that I remember. But that that was cool. I've got all. I got now. You got me all. Arnhem, Arnhem. I, I remember we danced in Arnhem. We uh, danced in Barcelona with Ramon's, we danced in Barcelona. Uh, Ramon's yeah, band. Yeah, we we we. Yeah, people danced there at as least. well. I, I I'm not sure if I danced. <laughs> Maybe I already you're, had too much to drink. You're not a dancer, so that stuff gets. I, gets, I was, dancing, gets, this you was dancing this year. You was dancing this year. Oh, then yeah, I looked the other, other the other way. Yeah, okay. good, for, good good for you. <laughs> so yeah. Plumcon was great. I mean, I mean, we have been plugging it every year since year. We're long-standing members of the community. We love to go to Plumconf. So, uh, yeah, what's not to like uh, about Plumconf uh, now? We had a great location. Uh, yes. We brought down the Wi-Fi on Monday and Tuesday uh, morning uh, on the training location. Yeah, too uh, many, too many l simultaneous logins. Too, too, too many like planistas. That. No, not only the logins, but imagine uh, planistas uh, logging in and for their training, uh, running uh, a pip install or build out at the same time. And I, I first thought it was the it was the pipeline, but it was actually it was the Wi-Fi system itself that somehow uh, uh, they, they weren't that, that used to. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was good. The uh, trainings were great. A lot of the trainings attended. were great. The location was for the rest great. So uh, yeah. the people were like, "Oh no, why is this happening today?" But uh, they, they, I think they solved it within an hour, and then the Wi-Fi was stable again for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, that was. It fun. was only I, the, I had the a typo on my password, so everything was my fault. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> it, it was really good to do trainings in person again, talk to people and get their uh, get their feedback. And people were like, af after two years of online trainings, uh, people came to me afterwards. And I was really scared that you asked me things all the time, uh, but that's how I keep people awake in, in trainings. But uh, there was a, a huge, a packed room with the effective Volto training and yeah. a lot of other successful <laughs> trainings. So that I'm happy about that. Sadly, no videos of that. Maybe we can make that happen next conference that the, the in-person trainings will be recorded because I think the training videos from the last two online conferences are great to have. It's It's not the same thing as being in a training and actually being able to be asked and answer something, but it is, it's a great resource to have online. And it would be, it would be weird to have like Volto 15 training video online uh, next year. That um, yeah. seems kind of dated, but the, the written documentation is really good and really up to date. So that's, that's <coughs> like, great. Like I said in the, the previous one, the, the, the material uh, for, the, for the training is great. Also the written training uh, uh, material on training.plone.org. Effective Volto was a great one. You did a new training on the migration stuff uh, uh, on Tuesday afternoon, which was well, well, well attended. Uh, yeah, I was uh, happy. And then we had, of course, uh, uh, like we already said, we had a, a lot of great talks on Wednesday and Thursday. We did our live thingy at the end of the Thursday afternoon, uh, Bef which was that was so cool before the party. But like, I, I was uh, after after the event, I was even more nervous that people hated it, and it <laughs> took took a while took me a while to find someone who didn't say, "Yeah, that was okay." Uh, <laughs> No, I, no, no. I, I didn't have that experience. No, no. I, I, no. I didn't get that bad of a mood. But uh, you, you know we have some people in the Plum community who, who have, like, <coughs> uh, not uh, super enthusiastic about the world in general, maybe. Or they don't show it that way. Not the super extroverted people. It's not complaining. It's just people are different. Okay, yeah. let's not go there. Oh, um, uh, so, yeah. I'm frozen. And my You're frozen. My, my video is broken oh no okay I, there's the nothing software, the nothing. software will solve that um, I, I i loved that we had uh, a party on the very first day of the conference after the first training day uh, i totally forgot we we, we yeah. had more parties we had yeah, the we first had party at the, at the brewery of parties and was the, the party brewery. in 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 a dungeon brewery and only the people who attended the first training day uh, managed to go there and it was they had free beers and pizza and 
Um, more free beer, more, more, and, and snacks. more free beer, and it was just great. It was so yeah, cool. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a really cool thing to have on a Monday. The first uh, really was a group feeling like ah, we're back again. Yes, uh, already on on Monday. Um, yeah, uh, and I must say, kudos to the to the video recording team uh, uh, that they found that that managed to record all the. I only said it also at the live uh, uh, at, at the live plo- uh, uh, podcast. Check back your. Uh, uh, check back the videos if you can. We're still here. Uh, after a video was uh, after a talk was done, the, there was a live stream within five or ten minutes on, on YouTube. Uh, and I think Erico and somebody else were v- very quick to add also those uh, um, uh, those the links to the YouTube videos in the detailed schedule of uh, 2022.ploneconf.org. So yeah. I was really like Thursday morning. Uh, oh, let's. Uh, oh, I, I re- because you're always the, the planning gods are always unfavorable when you have like three. Uh, talks and you at least need to see two of them yeah they, they were busy uh they were during busy. the conference always i was uh, what were they doing tweeting <laughs> no they were adding video links to the conference website using and, volto yeah and you could look back in the break you could still look back and say oh i missed that one was there something uh, uh, i really missed with it uh, these two talks that was really really great and they're all online now uh, they're all easy to find back there's a great search system uh, i still have to look a bit more from uh, a regular host company and others uh, i think roman was also involved as usual if Obviously. it's on, on searching he also held that so we've got the nuclear search widget uh, we had it during the conference to also look inside the video yeah, yeah. which i think is something that we'll we'll Impressive. try to also Good add talk. to the to the plan uh, to the new plan.org website that's a good idea to uh, to to find trainings, docs, plone org, and the videos. Uh, yeah. that, that would be cool to combine that in, in this in this tool. Uh, the, we also had a sprint Saturday and Sunday as usual. Um, that was um, I, I was it was great because we had a British double decker bus going there, which reeked of uh, diesel diesel <laughs> fumes. But especially on the way back when the, we had the setting sun and we were sitting outside in the back, that was really nice. I saw those on Twitter. I had to leave earlier Saturday afternoon. Uh, Martin Peters also had to leave and brought me uh, to, the, to the train station. And then I was in the train home, all, of course, with delays and I saw the first uh, Twitter uh, images on Twitter coming passing by of people sitting at the open part of the double-decker bus with the setting sun. And I was like, okay, <laughs> always leaving too early. <laughs> Yeah, we. Um, I'm, I think we should try to have. I, I love the bus, and it was it was a great location. Thanks. Um, the Imo for, to Imo Imo for organi- yeah, yes, Imo their, their headquarters. Uh, yes. uh, location beautiful. It was impressive, uh, but we should do that uh, closer to the uh, to the hotels because people obviously just drizzle drip um, like they leave at some point and um, we had sprints i remember bristol for example where we had more than a hundred sprint attendees and we didn't have that like 80 or not 80 percent of the conference attendees went to the sprint that was impressive and we didn't manage to do that this year and we should try to do that next year again on the other hand, it's good to cut people off after a while. Like, okay, now you're done sprinting because we've also had sprints where you see people sitting behind the desk at 11.30 in night with another beer that you think, maybe you should stop now and not press that commit get, button. Get a life. <laughs> get a life. No, it was it was a great location. It was a great sprint as well. Um, mm. Oh yeah, and and of course, you know, uh, the announcements. So we had an announcement at the end of the uh, Friday uh, talks for Obviously, the Next yeah. Plan Conference. Bus yeah, Country, n- Bus Country in 2023. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, to going there. Uh, we're not telling you which of the two best countries because there's only one. Not, no details. No details. <laughs> okay. Um, so community news community news so we've had plone conf we've had the news items indeed other plone uh, community news uh, at the plone conference we had the yearly uh, board or the yearly uh, foundation meeting i should say uh, uh, where all foundation members uh, who can apply if they uh, have uh, uh, the, have uh, given uh, uh, what is it uh, uh, reasonable contributions to plone and yeah. we try every year again to get people uh, to uh, 
to volunteer them, themselves because you have to f apply for it yourself. But uh, people are always a bit shy, like I didn't, I'm not, not sure if I did enough for Plon. I had the same like many years ago. So every year with a, a yearly foundation, syndrome. it's indeed imposter syndrome. We see raise hands and I'm still amazed of, of people that come after me that I think you've done like 10 times as much as, as me and you were not a foundation member yet. So we've had a foundation meeting and at every found, uh, yearly foundation meeting, there's the election of the new board. Yeah, the, the board was elected and the um, uh, all hail the new president who is the old president whose name will not be named in this uh, podcast ever. <laughs> that was so funny. Poor Erico. Yeah. And, <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I, I should, I should, uh, no, let's first do, the, I'll do to talk later. So Erico is still uh, president this year. Uh, we've got a small switch uh, that uh, after the, f in one of the first board meetings, they can always decide together who's to doing, who's going to do to which officer function. Kim Paulson is now the, our new vice president. Congratulations. Uh, William Fenny is our new secretary. I think, wasn't he secretary last uh, no, because well. I think uh, 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 probably we'll get to that later uh, because uh, we we also have some people if, if I, there are new people Andy, in there. I think Andy was secretary. Andy Lee sure. was the secretary, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Andy, Andy with uh, with uh, I can't and will never forget that this cat. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Andy was there in the meeting. He was there. We had him on, on yeah, screen, yeah. I think, with, the, with, the, with his cat again on, on his shoulders. It's a brilliant, brilliant couple to see them uh, like this. I, I try, I've got a new cat last year, and it will take another 10 years before the animal will sit on my shoulders. Yeah. Um, Jens Klein and Paul Ruland are staying on the board. Yeah, they just the stay there. Foundation. Yes. Uh, and uh, thanks to the leaving members, with, who is Andy Lieb, who takes his cat dragged him out of the board, I guess. And uh, Victor uh, Fernandez, Fernandez Dalba, he's, he has so many uh, tasks, so he, he doesn't need the board on top of that. Um, I don't know. He, he decided that in his wisdom, I guess. Yeah, for people who... Uh, uh, um, uh, Victor is also the photo uh, release manager. Yeah. Amongst and many other things. Uh, ma master, mastermind behind many things in Volta. Uh, very busy there. So and when people go... People come in. And uh, incoming are uh, someone who's... We, we, we've seen him before. Uh, Kim. Kim Nguyen. Uh, experienced uh, yes. uh, board member, great to have him back uh, to help out. Great. And the new member, Martin Peters, which was uh, also yes. one of the organizers. I was like, I was really surprised. I was really like, wow, you've been doing all this uh, blown call for organizing uh, for the last months and now, and also going into the board. But great to have uh, uh, someone, uh, yes. a second member from Belgium, actually, uh, next to uh, Kim Paulussen. That's uh, who true. Is, uh, uh, so he runs... Uh, should I say, oh, I'm, I'm now afraid to say if I'm, it, if I'm 100 percent sure if it is his company, but he, he Affinity. Runs a, yeah, it's Affinity. Okay, then I'm, then I'm, I was like, yes. this, I should be sure before I, I say this. Yes, he's running Affinity, yeah, yeah, he a Belgian uh, plan consultancy, uh, 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 well known. Uh, so yeah, great to have uh, uh, new, fresh ideas and people uh, also on the board and have them circulating a bit. And also to have, uh, I should also say th thanks to, to, for example, Paul Ruland, who is really a backbone, uh, has been a backbone in the board. Because I don't know about you, Philip, but whenever we do, we help companies or we help organizations, uh, uh, the biggest problem I face from organizational points of view when you try to help people with their blown sites or their online presence is that knowledge just seeps out of the organization and then uh, you have to re-explain everything to the to the new uh, manager of the day yes. or the week or the month you're talking to uh, and it's so important that you you keep knowledge inside an organization and it's great that for example people like uh, Paul now also I think uh, uh, Erika has been doing it for a while uh, Jens is there as a stable factor it's it's really cool cool to have to have evolution and not revolution all the time yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, yeah. People ch switching companies and roles is one of the hardest things in the IT projects that that I have. I'm, I, we have a couple of projects where I really worry about person X going off to greener mm -hmm. pastures because I know their their organization is going to be 
in deep, big, big trouble. I'm not naming names, but I, I, um, some people know who I'm talking about, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I've got war stories like that as well. Obviously. Um, well, one small, I really have to explain that. I swallowed it for the for first do the official uh, new board announcement. This running joke, I really have to thank Ricky Packer for it because our, <laughs> our, life, our, our live TPN at PlonConf was, it's a lot of improvisation. I mean, we have, a, like I showed, we have a list of topics we did, but the whole Eric naming thing was something he did himself by mentioning it the day before. Exactly. Um, and then we had this, this weird small news item where we just played a bit fun of that. But the real star of the show was actually Riku Pekka uh, because I, I started noticing, hey, wait, I shouldn't mention Eriko. But then when we got Riku Pekka on stage, then Riku Pekka did, I think, the final uh, part of the totally unplanned and improvised joke there, <laughs> which was really, really not, really not planned, but a lot, a lot of fun. So that's the new Plunk Foundation board. Um, something I've been working on with Erico uh, uh, for the last two weeks from the AI team uh, is uh, the re no, not replacement, but uh, our backup for uh, Twitter. Because there has, I don't think we should talk 15 to 20 minutes now about what's going on with Twitter. Um, but we do want to make sure as a Plown Foundation we are uh, uh, present on, the, on, the, on one of the many alternatives, which has been there for already quite a, a long time. So there's a Plown Social Mastodon uh, uh, server now. Very good. For the time being, it's only official. And I'm, I'm not sure if we're ever going to, to say, okay, look, all Plown, Plonistas, uh, please join the, uh, uh, join the Plown Social server. That doesn't really make sense because then we would also have to do a lot of work on the uh, maintenance and uh, moderation and other things. So for um, I myself, uh, I first joined uh, the uh, Dutch server, but I've also added myself to fosterdon.org. Did you already pick one, for Philip? I'm, I'm, st I'm still uh, counting. You're still looking. Yes, yeah, still looking. Um, I, I know that Twitter is a legacy platform, and um, but there are some, there are some options. I've installed it, but I'm still. I'm too busy with work, so I can't be bothered <laughs> to pick a server. It seems to be too much asked for a person like me. Yeah, it's, it's all federated. Pick one it's for all, me. It's all more, more local. Uh, so I, I just a few weeks ago, I picked the, the Dutch server, and then I looked at the local timeline yesterday, and I was like, hmm, do I want to be associated with what everybody else in the Netherlands is shouting about <laughs> everybody else? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'll go to a friendlier. There's a nice thread on communityplone.org, I think, as well, on, on the fosterdom.org. Uh, so if you, yeah, uh, you, have to, you have to pick a server like, uh, 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 because it's, it's decentralized, but uh, and you can still move all. You can also, you can, you can have multiple accounts and you can, can stop an account at one server and forward them to the new server. But I'll probably, uh, I'll, I'll, I think I'll change to, to fosterdom.org. Okay. Okay, um, yeah. let's see how that uh, turns out to go. Shall we go to the final topic? Yeah, yeah. let's go to our, our, our... So, as usual, usual, I had a half a glass of wine, so I'm, I'm, I'm not slurring. It's yeah, just that's not late your in the day already. That's not your glasses, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, wait, let's talk about add-ons. Add-ons, yeah. Um, okay. Plon add-ons, excellent. I, <laughs> I, I picked a, a oldie uh, for this uh, episode uh, that I want to show, and I picked that just before we talked about the what we're going to talk about, and I realized it's broken in Python 3.11. Uh, then I fixed it, and now I'm going to demo it. Uh, so let me share my screen uh, quickly. You, did you the name the add-on already, or should I just no, name no, it? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a secret until we do the screen share. But we should tell it to people who will listen to the audio-only version, so it's blown up debug toolbar. Yes, but I, 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 before that, I actually want to pro uh, show uh, pr proof, proof of concept? No, a proof that this instance is running uh, release yeah, so candidate Philip, 1 and Python 3.11. Wow. And so 5.7. Yes, and there is an add-on. It's called Plone App Debug Toolbar. It's really old, uh, but it's very useful. And I'm installing it there right now. And you shouldn't do that on your production server ever. And it gives you a link here, and it renders a viewlet with lots of information on the current context. Um, yeah, there's an interactive section. Uh, let's go to context just quickly. You can see what you're looking at. Let's look at something else, by the way, uh, so that it makes more sense. 
So you can move to any context in your site, any content item, content object. On there, you have the debug toolbar. You can inspect all kinds of things about the context, but also about the request and other stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, Philip, I think this one was made uh, uh, in, with inspiration from the Django debug toolbar. That could be. I think that was, yeah. uh, like you said, it's an oldie, but Django is already also uh, around, has been around for uh, for many, many years. And I think this one was expired, uh, uh, a planista was inspired uh, by, the, by the Django debug toolbar. So you, you don't need uh, PDB. This tells you everything. So the URL, the path, uh, the class, it's a news item in this case. Uh, the, the interfaces, including marker interfaces, which are marked with the asterisks. Um, the FTI information, like uh, what aliases are there, which is usually annoying to, uh, to find out. You have to go to the source code. Um, the methods that are available on that object, including their signature uh, and which file provides them. Uh, this list is huge, obviously. Um, the uh, variables that are available and the values of the variables. Uh, the methods are obviously not called. That would be weird. Um, also, the Let's views. Let's see what comes back. <laughs> all, all views that can be registered, uh, used on that object, all stuff that is in um, subcomponent architecture as a view. Then there is the really cool interactive thingy, which has a tails tester. So you can say, okay, what is object oh, wow. URL? If you test your tail, exp oh crap, what happened here? Object URL doesn't work for some reason. Why not? Interesting. So this is, by the way, the, the traceback here is the Python 3.11 um, traceback. Um, interesting. That worked like five minutes ago. Again, I need to reload the site. Execute. That yeah. does work. You go yeah. directly to the portal URL. Yeah. Portal URL. So all this, all this information, Philip. Uh, we, we've had add-ons for this before, but it, was, but it was all, all, uh, it's, it's all in, in different parts. Like we've had the, the documentation in this ZMI, uh, partly. Mm -hmm. If you uh, f now I forgot the name, installed it for years. Uh, we've had an, uh, an add-on where you can call. In, also, don't never install this in production, but you can just call at PDB. Yeah. The PDB Oracle, debug, the or, wasn't it the Oracle or something? Called? Also, a very old add-on, but then you can just dump a PDB on the context and also do this, these things in a terminal. But it's really cool to see uh, this evolved and see a lot of information now uh, uh, very easily available uh, uh, through the web. Uh, which, because it's always like if you make typos or the small things, uh, uh, it can take a lot of time to figure out those, and then it's uh, much easier to, to look here what's actually available. What's very useful and usually takes a lot of time in a PDB uh, session, for example, is inspecting the catalog for this object. You have to go to various uh, URLs in the ZMI and stuff like that, and it's annoying. And here you just click on catalog, and you see everything that is indexed, and everything that is on, on metadata, which is the information that is on the brains when you get them back from the catalog, which is uh, useful. By the way, you can see the image scales are on the brains now. And stuff about ZOAP, you can uh, see the database and versions, mm -hmm. and you can reload your code here. Plone reloads just included. Um, again, a very, very useful development tool. Um, I'm going to finish here. It, there is no equivalent in Volto yet. Um, I'm not um, volunteering to write this, something like that because the endpoint is going to be exhaustive. It's probably the whole, th the, just the same thing, the same code. It just returns everything as a JSON. So basically, it's actually stupid simple to do that. Hmm. Interesting. Can't you, just, um, can't you just, just add, add an HTML viewer component uh, uh, and render that in the front end? I mean, it's static yeah, it information. Does, it, it Doing an extra loop only to, to go to JSON, to HTML again for this information. It, it will not show you which Volto component is used. You need the, the, the React uh, developer tools for that. So that is uh, additional No, but I mean the stuff. output of the, plum, the, the, the XML yeah. output here, you could put yes. that in a React, in a React HTML a rendering component and yes, then, and then at least show it. It's just basically a dictionary of Do, strings. Doing a complete double conversion of by moving this information into JSON and then again into HTML when it's already there uh, would be nice in the, for, for somebody else to volunteer if you really want to have uh, the... the the last pixel of, of, of control, how it looks. Uh, actually, I needed, I needed this stuff uh, uh, this week. Uh, I had a, a problem with uh, a calendar portal not, sh not showing some stuff. And it was, uh, at the end, it was an interface that was missing. 
uh, uh, which I found out by the object provides uh, indeed in the in the catalog to see which uh, marker interfaces were on the were on the content item. So I, I, I event. Um, I, I, as I said, there is a pull request for Plone 3, Python 3.11, and um, I'll get that merged, and I'll try to figure out what the <coughs> issue was. Now that I look at a folder, I can see the portal URL, so that works now, but maybe for that news item, something, I'm not sure what was wrong. I, I will have to look at that trace back. Yeah, so I got also got an add-on, uh, which is a nice uh, post Plone conf uh, uh, Story because I ha I hadn't realized that Andrea Checky was not at PlonConf until after PlonConf. Uh, he, he was at PlonConf. His 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 photo was. Uh, yes, his photo was there, and I was like, "What's going on?" But I was so busy that I didn't realize until I think at the end of PlonConf, like, "Oh, he couldn't come." Uh, yeah, he was sick. He was he was sick indeed. Um, but Andrea Checky uh, 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 gave well. I don't think he realized that I'm going to talk about it on on the Plone Newsroom podcast. But a nice add-on called Red Turtle Chef Cookie, and I know about this add-on because we have been using the previous add-on uh, which uh, Red Turtle developed for uh, a province in uh, Italy, uh, Reggio Emilia Romana. They created a, a GDPR uh, uh, add-on for Plone a few years ago called RER Cookie Consent. And we've been using it also uh, at a customer because it was highly uh, uh, configurable. You can change, you can add all the consent categories and we should do it in a, a GDPR special sometimes uh, at TPN uh, to really uh, uh, shy away all our listeners and viewers. But um, so our cookie consent, we used it and we found a small bug in there. Uh, if anybody else is updating LXML and see strange stuff, something in LXML uh, has recently changed that does something weird to dollar signs in variables substitutions. Oops. So we, we had like like a, a dollar uh, accolade with a variable and after one processing saving and back again, uh, LXML was changing the uh, dollar sign to a percentage 24 if I'm, or to percent, something very strange. So, okay, look, we're open source, we're a community. Uh, uh, we patched it locally and I, on Discord, I logged into Discord and I uh, wrote a small issue to Andrea, uh, like, hey, we've been using your add-on for a while. We had a small issue with LXML. And Andrea told me, yeah, cool, but we've switched uh, from uh, our own add-on, RR Cookie Consent, to a new one called RedTurtle.ChefCookie. Uh, somewhere in, in April, May, uh, because there are, uh, with GDPR, there's of course European law, but there's all, all those laws are implemented in national laws and especially every country in Europe, yeah, great, is, is implementing the law sometimes a little bit different or making amendments or changes. So Red Turtle had the requirement to update their, uh, uh, their add-on module for GDPR compliance. Uh, they looked around, they had to change some stuff, and they've created Red Turtle Chef Cookie. I still have to test it myself, but it has a really nice thing uh, where it's already, if you don't, if you have like sensitive material in your content, say for example, you embed a YouTube video, uh, you're not allowed to activate the YouTube video until somebody has given consent. So there's a transform. Obviously. Indeed. So there's a transform in there that disables, that the moves, for example, the uh, the source from the iframe to a data source something. Then the content server side is already compliant because it's not there. And then in, in the browser, there you run some JavaScript that seeks, oh, is the cookie set or do we have consent in general? And then it re-enables and switches back the data source to the source. And yeah, the, the real, well, not to be funny, but I built exactly the same thing in April, but then for a customer internal module. <laughs> so I was like, okay, great to know this from you, but I, my own fault, I should have shouted out somewhere in April, like, oh, I'm going to build this stuff. And uh, uh, Maritz built a transform for me uh, for this customer. Uh, and then in October, I hear, oh, somebody else has built exactly the same, also in almost the same month this year, with exactly, almost literally the same transform code, because there's, there's, there's not too many different ways to do this. And I was, I was, I was, again, in my face, okay, we need to talk, we need to talk so much more than just develop our own stuff and releasing oh, it maybe later. I, I, I can, I can add, um, I don't know, uh, insult to injury, but uh, in this case for me, uh, because this morning I had a call with Steffen, my colleague, about a uh, cookie policy uh, <laughs> there we go. add-on that we need to develop for a client. And we looked at uh, Collective DSG 
VO or uh, is it Kit Concept DSV VO? It's Kit, Kit Concept yeah, uh, DSV. Yeah, sorry, I, I mistyped it in our yeah. outline. And yeah. uh, we saw our oh, this just does the general <clears throat> okay, just don't bother me anymore, and we need more control and. So we didn't know about these add-ons, and I hope Stefan didn't waste the whole day on that already. I just sent him a text um, to check out these add-ons, uh, especially the rhetorical chef cookie. Yeah. So how's yours called? Is it published or is it only internal? Uh, it's, it's, it's partly for a plone site where we're already mo we're going to move to uh, to migrate. So I had to okay. create something that works both in plone 4, plone 5, and in plone 6. Uh, no, so this is really plone 6 classic only. And it was really, case. really hacky. Uh, so, so uh, I think Red Turtle Chef Cookie is for Plone Classic UI. Okay. Uh, the PloneConf website and the upcoming betaplone.org is using uh, a Volto uh, add-on. There's also uh, Poo GDPR. I did, oh, I didn't put it in the outline. So, bad me. I'll, I'll check the, it from the, the package. The, yes, the so. Please continue question, talking. The, the obvious uh, question is, why the heck is that not in awesome plone? Uh, Andrea, do you think it's not awesome? Um, please create a pull request for awesome plone for a um, red turtle chef cookie. Oh uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up that one. So Good. indeed there have been a lot of add-ons like ARIA cookie consent. Uh, we have been using collective cookie cutter in the past. Like I said, the DSVGO one, uh, the people from it, IMEO. It could be a whole section in Oh yeah, awesome there's, there's, there's a whole section we can add there. Uh, keep continue, continue talking, Philip. I'm looking at plone .org, uh, our plone.org repo in the front end, and then I'm going to look into the package JSON. There is the package JSON. There is the module because the GDPR Volto module we already have yes. is called. Is called. Where are you? I have no idea. Where are you? I saw the screenshots today, and it really looks Volto nice. Volto uh, GDPR privacy. That's okay. the one. So if you have a Volto site, you need to add a GDPR compliant consent model, Volto dash GDPR dash privacy. So and it. now I'm going to check if that's an awesome Volto already. <laughs> GDPR. <laughs> Volto embed DSGV. Nope, it's not. So okay. whoever is responsible for that, what the actual F, please add. If, if you create something that is of such obvious use for a lot of people, um, please add it to the uh, awesome Volto or awesome clone site, de just depending on if it's for classic or Volto. Okay. So, Philip. I think we can wrap this up. Yeah, exciting weeks ahead. We've yes. got uh, another release candidate. We've got a sprint coming up. Uh, and it's uh, the first episode under one hour, I think. Um, yeah, I was looking like, like said, 56 minutes was our... Uh, was our live app talk so we've got four minutes left so let's wrap it up and we're under the hour for a normal excellent remote i'll try podcast. to we'll try to release that as soon as possible tomorrow um and um yeah two very exciting weeks ahead i'm very much looking forward to december 12th uh to have plan six under your christmas tree or whatever tree you prefer okay philip take care What's a stay pleasure? safe Take care, and we'll see you next month, and we'll probably see if we can move uh, the podcast maybe a, bit, a little bit earlier, uh, because we're not going to do record it at the 25th again at, uh, before, at Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, that's We true. should try it a bit earlier now. Okay. And we've got stuff to discuss then. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later.